Pixel 5 is Google's current top of the line Pixel phone and was released last October. I've been using one for over the past six months and I've been surprised at how continually drawn I've been to using this phone. So let's dive into what makes the Pixel 5 an interesting phone. And first up, I've got to talk about weight. This has been one of the most surprising things about using the Pixel 5 over the long term. It feels great to hold for an extended period of time. This is often an overlooked part of smartphones, but weight matters when you're going to be holding a thing in your hand for hours on end. The back material Google used also contributes to this comfortable feel. It's a non-slip material that feels pretty grippy, and even if you put Google's recycled plastic fabric case on it like I do, it still feels great. I love Google cases so much, like honestly, I've tried to find a case like this for my other phones with no luck. It's something that I think other phone manufacturers and case makers should look at copying because Google just makes some really good cases. Okay, so that's how the phone feels, but what about actually using it? The Pixel version of Android on the Pixel 5 is good, just as it was with previous Pixels. The Pixel 5 offers a slimmed down version of Android that doesn't have as many features as Samsung, for example, but you don't get the bloatware or ads that you do in Samsung's One UI either, so it's a trade-off. Personally, I prefer Google's Pixel version of Android, especially when you consider the Pixel-specific features like call screening, which allows you to use the Google Assistant to screen out spam calls. Hold For Me is another feature addition to the Pixel OS that allows you to use the Google Assistant to wait on hold for you. When someone comes back on the line, the Google Assistant will give you a notification and bring you back into the call, saving you a lot of time in my experience, and it's worked quite well. Also, the Pixels get Android updates first, so if you're a diehard Google fan, you should definitely look at getting a Pixel phone. And if you're a super fan and you have multiple Android phones, the Pixel 5 makes a really good phone for downloading Android betas as well as developer previews. The Pixel also gets new feature drops every quarter with some pretty cool features that are exclusive to Pixel phones. The Pixel 5's digital well-being features are another thing that have made a difference for me over the long term, especially bedtime mode. The Pixel lets you schedule bedtime mode, which allows you to turn off certain apps and turn turns the screen to grayscale, making everything look less enticing and exciting. I found this mode actually makes me use my phone less at night, and the graying out apps like social media apps helps reduce the temptation to stay on my phone longer at night. Song recognition is another standard Pixel feature that I love on this phone. When you enable this setting, the phone will show you what song is playing in the background on the always on display if you have that enabled, as well as the lock screen. Next up, battery life. The Pixel 5 is thankfully not like the Pixel 4 in this regard. The Pixel 5 has superb battery life that should last you all day and well into day two. Google has done a good job to optimize the battery life of this phone, and in general, I get better screen time with the Pixel 5 than I do with my iPhone 12. Speaking of the screen, the Pixel 5 screen is good. The 90 hertz display makes animations and the user interface feel fluid. Also, if you're looking at the Pixel 4a versus the 5, the screen to me is one of those major differences between the two phones. With the Pixel 5, you don't get the weird purple distortions that you do on the Pixel 4a's OLED panel, and the 90 hertz capacity of the display does make the Pixel 5 feel a lot faster. Next, Pixel Buds. Google is slowly getting better at creating an ecosystem of products around the Pixel, and the Pixel Buds are a perfect example of this. Not only do they instantly pair to the Pixel like AirPods do with my iPhone, but the Pixel 5 has reverse wireless charging for the Buds case, perfect for when you're in a bind and need a quick charge. I also love the Recorder app. I find its translation is very good in US English, and it's more accurate than YouTube's automatic closed captions, and it's what I use to create the captions for all of our YouTube videos. Overall, the performance of the Pixel 5 has been great. I haven't run into any significant slowdowns for what I use the phone for, which is mainly reading, recording, taking photos and videos, phone calls, and video calls. Now the Pixel 5, like a lot of phones out there, support VPNs, and that's where this video's sponsor, Surfshark, comes in. If you're like me and you can't wait to get back out there and travel, VPNs are essential. Surfshark's VPN allows you to access content from around the world, bypassing censorship and placing your IP address in any location, which is great for situations like when I've traveled and wanted to watch Rick and Morty through the US Adult Swim app or through Hulu. Surfshark also digitally encrypts the traffic from your computer and mobile device 
devices, which is critical if you plan to securely do things like digital banking while connected to any Wi-Fi network, especially if it's public Wi-Fi. You can also access Surfshark from an unlimited number of devices using only one account. You can download Surfshark on Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android devices, the Chrome and Firefox browsers, and even on Android TV and Amazon Fire TV. Surfshark also has this great one-click feature called Clean Web, which will block ads, trackers, and malware while you browse the web. And the best part is you can get all of this for 83% off and three extra months for free by using our promo code six months. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. So try Surfshark VPN today by using the link in the description below. All right, the last main part of the Pixel 5 that I really like is the camera, specifically for still photos. This phone takes excellent photos given its sensor is the same as the one on the Pixel 2. The Pixel 5, like the Pixels before it, produced great photos with a cool, contrasty look. The HDR Plus capabilities are great in situations with really bright elements in your shot like the sun, and the added wide-angle camera gives you the flexibility in the shots you want to take. Compared to another phone around its price like my iPhone 12, both take decent photos that look pretty similar in terms of resolution and sharpness. The main predominant difference between their photos are their overall look. The iPhone produces a warmer tone with its photos and likes to punch up the highlights a bit too much in certain situations, I'd say, where the Pixel 5 does a great job balancing highlights and shadows and overall has a cooler, higher contrast look to its photos. Now, where these phones differ quite a bit is in video quality, and this leads me to my first downside with the Pixel 5. At the end of the day, the Pixel 5's video quality is just not where it needs to be when you compare it to the competition. Take this shot for example, normal streetscape. The iPhone produces a pretty good image, it looks crisp, but when you look at what the Pixel does, when you zoom in on it, it looks like a cartoon. It just looks really odd. And this is the perfect illustration of the issues I've had with the Pixel's video capabilities. At first, things look okay, but when you look at it a little closer, especially on a larger screen, it just doesn't perform as well as you expect. Another example is this panning shot I took at Peak Fall here in North Carolina. Notice as the shot pans, the white balance goes haywire, constantly shifting and making this footage unusable. Now, am I saying that the Pixel 5 isn't going to be able to get you any good video footage? No, absolutely not, especially shots that have great direct light. The new stabilization modes they added are pretty useful and especially the cinematic mode, which can produce some pretty gorgeous footage. But overall, I'm still disappointed that the Pixel 5's video quality just isn't as consistent as the iPhone's, making it less reliable to use. Another downside to the Pixel 5 is the lack of an ability to open the assistant when the phone screen is off through a button or squeeze. Google removed the squeeze for assistant hardware found in the Pixel 4, and after six months, I've concluded that this is a feature I do miss because they didn't replace it with anything. I wish there was a way to quickly bring up the assistant by using one of the buttons on the side like you can do on an iPhone or Samsung Galaxy device. Another unfortunate thing with the Pixel 5 is the lack of a larger size for those who want a larger premium Pixel. The only big phone Google released last year was the Pixel 4a 5G, which does have some, but not all of the features that the Pixel 5 has. Now, one major downside with the Pixel 5 for some people out there is there's no flashy premium cutting edge tech in this phone. Unlike the Pixel 4, and 4XL, the Pixel 5 doesn't have some flashy new hardware features like a solely radar chip, but at the same time, it doesn't have the battery woes of the 4 and comes at a cheaper price. But there are also a lot of great other Android phones and iPhones at this price that the Google Pixel 5 is competing with. So who exactly is this phone for and do I recommend it? I do recommend the Pixel 5 and here are some groups that I think this phone is for. First, Google diehards who already bought a Pixel 3 or older, I think the Pixel 5 offers you enough to justify that upgrade. Now, if you have a Pixel 4 or 4 XL, I don't think there's enough there to justify the upgrade to the 5. You may not even see it as an upgrade, but you may also want to consider it if your battery is already shot. The Pixel 5 is also a great phone for Pixel 3a or even 4a customers who want a more premium phone with the same great Google experience. And then in general, I think if you want an Android phone that has simple software with a great camera at a decent price with fantastic battery life, it gets Android updates fast and consistently with some awesome Google Assistant exclusive features, then I think the Pixel 5 is a great choice. Now I know what you're gonna ask me if you've seen our other Pixel videos on the channel. Is the Pixel 5 my main phone? 
Unfortunately, no, it's not. I put my SIM card in my iPhone 12 for two reasons, video quality and ecosystem. Now, as I said before, the video quality on the Pixel 5, unfortunately, is just not reliable enough for me to produce consistent footage. Now, my comment about the ecosystem is a bit more complicated and actually leads me to my last downside around the Pixel, which is lack of a compelling accessory ecosystem like a smartwatch that rivals the Apple Watch. Before Google Assistant speakers became the entry point for me into the Android ecosystem, I mainly had Apple products. Apple's a dominant brand here in the US, and while yes, they are more of a premium brand in technology, they do make just some really good products that integrate with each other extremely well. You can copy something on an iPhone or an iPad and paste it directly on your Mac. You can unlock your phone or Mac using your Apple Watch. Your messages effortlessly sync across all of your devices through iMessage, etc. Right now, Google's Pixel devices just don't have enough to make it worth it to switch out of Apple's ecosystem for me. Especially if you already have a Mac, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, HomePod, or use iMessage, or even have AirTags now, etc. Once you buy an iPhone and then a few more Apple products, the switching cost to something like a Pixel is huge because Apple just does a damn good job at building an ecosystem around their major products like the iPhone and then integrating all of their products together to work extremely well. And Apple's not the only one who tries to create an ecosystem around its products. Both Samsung and OnePlus are trying to do this as well. And to be fair to Google, they are trying to go in this direction as well with the launch of the Pixel Buds last year, which we've reviewed and I love using. Once someone switches to a Pixel, they need a reason to stay, and when you look at where the smartphone market is going, I just don't think it's enough to have a phone and wireless earbuds. I think Google needs to build more of an ecosystem around the Pixel. To me, Google can do two things this year to make the Pixel ecosystem more compelling. Come out with a smartwatch that can rival the Apple Watch and then build better integrations between the Pixel and Google Assistant devices. Like being able to hand off a phone call from the Pixel to a Nest Audio or send a text message through a Nest Hub second generation. Now, that's just my opinion, and I know this is a tricky subject, so let me know in the comments what you think does Google Google need to build an ecosystem around its Pixel phones to be competitive? How do Android manufacturers and the fact that Google makes Android come into play and complicate Google's hardware strategy? I'm really interested to see what people think, so let me know in the comments. All right, so that's who I think this phone is for and why I don't use the Pixel as my main phone, though it's still a device I use every day, especially to read on at night because it's a great feeling phone to have in your hand, the software is snappy, and the battery life is superb. Now, the last question you may have is whether or not you should go with the Pixel 5 or the Pixel 4a. In general, I think if you can swing the price, the Pixel 5 is worth it, especially when you consider its wireless charging, better camera system, better screen, and its water resistance. The wireless charging and better screen for me are the things that would definitely sway me over to the Pixel 5. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful and useful, and if you did and liked it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel to see more six months later reviews on Google and other tech products. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.